really doesn't tie into our message, but it ties in with the model we had. Trent talked about it last week. This year at Christ Church, we want to do one more. And Don Lawrence uh, shared that with me and said, man, that would be perfect. What a, what a scene. Lord, help me do one more. He kept saving people. He was in the military without a weapon, he said. He would not use a weapon. And he was saving. And Lord, help me do one more. When we get that focus in us, and we think about that every single time, every week goes on this year, 2020, one more, whatever it is, think of one more, one more person to invite, one more thing to do, and let God say, you say, God, Lord, let me do one more. So I wanted to tie that in. At Christ Church, we are going through an inspired series. It's the teaching and commands of Jesus. It's the red letters in the Bible. And we are going through every one, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're in Luke still. And if you could please stand out of reverence for the red letter teaching as we get ready to continue on. Luke 23, 28 to 31 says, But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs that have never bore a child, and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for your love. I ask you to speak through me and give us the words that pierce our hearts, to help us grow, to help us learn to be better to be Christ-like, to make a difference. I thank you for your love. I ask you to be with us all as we learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. See, it's so easy for us to get caught up in this hectic world. Things are going on, and the world's going crazy. And these women are walking with Jesus. See, this is a time Jesus is going and being brought to the cross. And they're weeping for him because they know what's going to happen. And he turns, he goes, don't weep for me. I'm going home. You got to stay here. It's going to be crazy and crazier. And the world wants to, to lean on us and, and make us think we have to fit into this world. And this is not our home. See, he was getting ready to be crucified. And that's a sad moment to think about it. What's going to happen to watch it? I couldn't imagine because when he was walking there and, and they're weeping, he is not even really recognizable as a person. He was whipped and beaten so bad. So it is a, a time where you would tell or think, man, this is so sad. And Jesus tells him, don't weep for me. See, I'm completing the Father's will. I am stepping up, and I am going to do what he wants, and I'll be seated at the right hand of the Father. See, the women and us, said women and children, we're going to go through a crazy time right after that stretch. And it's crazier and crazier, the Bible says. It'll get crazier before it gets better in our lifetime. We need to focus on the right things. See, if we focus on this world, feelings will win out. See, and people will live to please themselves. If we focus on this world, our feelings will win out. And we'll do everything that feels good or feels right. Oh, but I know I might not, I shouldn't do this, but it feels right. And he's saying, don't weep for me. You're going to have to go through this without me here. How much more you'll have to pour into me and understand who I am. Look what it says in Romans 1, 21 to 28. It says, yes, they knew God, but they, they wouldn't worship him as God or even thank him or give him thanks. And they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things to each other's bodies. They traded the truth 
about God for a lie. So they worship and serve the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen, it says. And it goes on in verse 26. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way of to have sex and indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, and the, the men, instead of having normal relations with men, burned for lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Since they thought it was foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned, abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. So I don't want to stick there only, but look at this one verse. It says, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. See, when we're sitting and living in sin, any sin, see, there's no greater sin than the next other than blaspheme the Holy Spirit, all right? But there is no sin. It's what is keeping you from putting God first? What is keeping you from living your walk and saying, God, your will be done, not mine? He said, don't weep for me. I'm going home. See, I was here. I was raising the dead. I was giving sight to the blind. I was stopping bleeding from people bleeding for years and years. I cured lepers. I healed feet and hands. And they are bringing me to death. It's crazy to think how much harder it is when he is not there in the flesh. See, each of us needs a personal relationship with Jesus. We cannot sit back and hope that someone else's, someone else's faith will bring us along too. Well, oh, my wife has a great walk. We'll go into this heaven together. Or I'm around people that have a good faith. I don't need to change. I'm good with the people around me. No, we have to have a personal relationship with Jesus to know him so well that he knows us and it's good and we're growing, and we're learning. Don't sit back and get comfortable. That's the warning he's saying, I'm going home. He says, look how tough it's going to be. If they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it's dry? Do you really let that sink in? Can you imagine seeing only good stuff happening and being so angry they want to kill you? Romans 128 ended that scripture saying, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. It's all right in this world because the world's going to say, that's all right. You can eat that fruit. You'll just be like God. And we so easily get caught up. Yeah, that won't be bad. And then we do the things this world desires instead of what God is showing us and how we should be obedient and surrender to his will. See, we need to look through the eyes of Jesus and anything we're doing, when we're walking it out, we should be thinking, what would Jesus do? I know it seems cliche. You could probably buy a shirt that says that. But see, if we don't do that, the world's going to do that. And our eyes are going to see all the things that the world wants you to love. Money. Possessions. Relationships. And doing things that should have never been done because God should be first. And we've learned this. It's to love God above all things. And everything else, we don't hate him in, the, in the, the name that we think hate is. We love less those things and dive in to what God says. See, he's not here in the flesh anymore. 
he says, it would be better that I go than I'll send you the Holy Spirit and he'll be in you. Look at John 16, 7. It says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. See, Jesus is walking around in the flesh. He became flesh. The word became flesh. He goes, if I go, man, I can reach a lot more of you by sending the Holy Spirit to live in you. And you walk this out. You do the things I show. You live it. But it takes us understanding that it's not our will. We live for or live to do. It's his will. And we can push through. See, it's a free gift to follow Jesus. God sent him for us to cover us, to take away our sins. But it will take devotion, hard work, and faith to walk it out. Think of this question. Is there a way out of this crazy world? The answer is yes. With Jesus. See, in Jesus, we can do all things. In Jesus, he'll give us the strength to say no when our flesh is burning and we want to do it so bad. Or we think it's so important. When we go to him and we're in there, we're connected to the vine, we can say, not my will be done, but yours. Could you imagine praying so hard that blood is dripping. You know what's going to happen to you. It's going to be brutal. And you say, take this cup. And Trent went over a great example of what that really meant. And he's like, but not my will be done. I will go through that for you. Look at these questions. Can I change or can we change? Can we grow? Can we learn? The answer again is yes. With Jesus in our lives, all things are possible. That should make you celebrate. That should make you get up every morning and cheer. I can be better because of Jesus. We are even told in the Bible, we can do abundantly more than we could even think. 15 years ago, I was not a believer way far away from even caring about Jesus. He can do abundantly more than people can think. Look at Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Wow. You'll be made complete with all the fullness. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Amen. Don't settle don't get stuck in this world thinking that your feelings are going to drive you. They're going to give you that, that peace you need. They're going to fill that hole in your heart that only Jesus can fill. It might be good for a while, but see, when you're living in sin, it says that it will burn in you. You know it. You know Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. Things don't feel right when you're doing wrong. He'll get you. He'll get you. Open up and say, get me sooner. It's going to be hard as it is. I need that peace and joy because you're in me. See, these things can't happen on our own. It's when we surrender and let God lead that we can see change happening. That's when growth happens. And that's when we are open to learn. That's when you notice things. You're so in tune because every day you're waking up and you're starting your day off reading God's word 
Or if you're not a morning person like me, you go to bed. Before bed, you open God's word, and you're reading it, and you're letting it sink in. And you go, God, I don't want this just to know it. I want this to do it. I want to be different. See, Jesus takes us and makes us a better version of ourselves. We're created in God's image. He didn't mess up. He created us with the talent, with the skill set, with the personality that we have because we are created in his image. But he's saying, listen, when you surrender that, I'll make it better. I'll make you shine It'll make so much impact in this world if you do it that it'll make people want to seek my son and know him. See, this is a key part. See, he makes us live and use our gifts for others, not for ourselves. I love that. See, where this world wants us to think only of ourselves. What's better for me? I can climb the ladder faster. I don't care what I do to that person. I need more money. I don't care if I ever see my family. I'm going to be rich. It doesn't matter. The world will say, that's good. You're supporting your family. And God's going, man, I'll give you what you need. Seek me. Above all else, Think of this. This is a twisdom. If you don't know what that is, if this is something you can use Twitter for and get it out there. <laughs> if you are succeeding and no one around you is, pray, let God change the way you think. If you're succeeding and no one else is around you, you're doing it wrong. You should be so excited to have people come along with you and grow with you, and you should be excited if they pass you by. They might be gifted a different way than you, and God can use them more than he's using you. And it doesn't mean that you're less. God has no favorites. It's just, are you celebrating what you can do? Are you celebrating people around you to grow and learn also? If you're succeeding and no one else is, pray about it. Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. See, when you change the way you think, then you will know God's will for you. And man, what is God's will for me? Is it hard? What's it going to be? It's good and pleasing and perfect. Be Christ-like in everything you do. That's his will. Whatever job you do, shine like Jesus. doesn't matter what you do, who you are, be like Christ. And it will be good and pleasing and perfect. See, this is what happens when we believe the yes. When we believe that Jesus died for us and in him we have yes, we can be better. See, then the change happens. Then the, we believe we can grow and then we see us learning. We see us different today or tomorrow and the next day we can see that happening because we believe it. Colossians 3, 1 and 4 says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Since you've been raised to new life, if you accepted Jesus, you're raised to new life. Think of heaven now. Ways to do things better. Where Christ sits at the place of the right hand of the Father. If you, don't know, if you don't know Jesus that way, see us. We want to pray with you. We want to help you. We want to guide you to get there, to see the peace and joy. It says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth, for you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. 
And when Christ, who is your life, when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the world, to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. That's amazing. If that doesn't charge you up, man, we got to check what's going on because you can get all the glory that he has by living this out. He will give you all the strength. The Holy Spirit will lead you and this world will tug you. And they'll say, oh, it's way better to do this. And the devil is here to kill, steal, and destroy. That is it. Don't get caught up in thinking we are doing life alone. Know him and live these thoughts in your heart always. Always live these thoughts. Number one, believe he has changed you. Believe he has changed you. Look at Ephesians 4, 21 and 24. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Right there, you can put on your new nature to be truly righteous and holy. Are we going to fall short sometimes? Yes, we are. If you think you're never going to sin because you know Jesus, you're wrong. The, the difference is that when you are living it out and you mess up, you can say, God, forgive me. Repent and keep walking it out, and he keeps growing you. You have to believe that he has changed you. Number two, believe in the growth he has for you and never stop growing. So many times I've heard people, oh, I read the Bible 10 years ago. I'm good. Never stop growing. Never stop seeking. Never stop asking. Those are the excitements that can happen when a, a, our Bible, the book, the 66 books, is alive and active it's different. It's different every time I read it and I read through it. He shows me things, and I know we talk about this. It's real. I've read Luke hundreds of times, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, this scripture was never there. And I needed it today, so I read through it. Look at 2 Corinthians 3.18. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we change into his glorious image. He changes us into his glorious image. If you're succeeding and no one else is around you, pray. You're doing it wrong. Let him change you. Number three, no matter how hard it is for you to learn, it's hard for me to learn. I worked very hard to get D's in school. <laughs> it was hard to learn. See, when it's alive and active, when I started picking up the Bible, it was easy. Because I was like, God, you have to do this. I don't like it. I don't like to read. I don't like to, to do stuff for a, sh a long period of time. And man, he has never, ever made me not excited to open up the word and learn and grow and change. Look what Proverbs 18, 15 says. Intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. Is that you? Never be satisfied. You can always get smarter. You can always learn more. You can always mature. Don't settle for what you're doing, even if it's good. Move it to great. And when it's great, keep moving. We're never done learning. We're never done growing. We're never done changing till we go home. 
Don't ever think you're there. But the cool part is that every step of the way is a blessing. And you're full and you can walk it with joy. And when hard things happen, you're ready because he's equipped you for it. And you take it on and you're like, man, I can be better. And this I'm going through that's hard right now and bless those who mourn. He says it. It's not that you don't mourn. You're just robots now. Bless those who mourn. If you're going through something, you're going through it so you can help someone that's going to go through that. That's thinking of others when you go through something. And now you have an outreach that you can help when someone reaches out. Have you noticed all these things take believing? Here's what belief really means in our definition. To accept something as true. Feel sure of the truth of. That's our definition. I looked up the Greek word. The Greek word is pistis, which means confidence or to trust in and assurance. Isn't that cool? And assurance. See, if we're connected to Christ and we're learning and we've accepted him and we're going, man, it's not me anymore. It's you. Help me. We have an assurance. We have an eternal home. He came to bridge the gap to heaven for us. We need to have that assurance that Jesus came to give us a way home. And we should celebrate even when it's too dry. See, if they could be mean while the tree is green, how's it going to be when it's dry? See, when it's dry here, I give it water. I make it green again because I am shining a light and I'm, I'm a, a fertilizer for people around me. And you should be and we all should be as Christians because we call ourselves Christians, Christ-like people that can make a difference, and we help that change, and we help it turn green. See, or when people criticize us when we're trying to be fully devoted followers of Christ. See, he said, they'll hate you. They hated me. So when you're trying to do it, man, everyone's against me. Everyone says that negatives. I'm just going to quiet down. No. He's saying, step forward, be bold. This world wants us. The devil, who is the ruler of this world, wants us to follow our feelings and love this world. And God doesn't even want us to think about this world first. He wants us to think of heaven and then shine a light here and help people know his son. I want to share this quote from Rick Warren. Um, I think it's just amazing and a perfect thought that we need. He says, our culture has accepted two huge lies. The first is that if you disagree with someone's lifestyle, you must fear or hate them. The second is that to love someone means you agree with everything they believe or do. Both are nonsense. You don't have to compromise convictions to be compassionate. See, this world... Tell us, if you do not agree with me, you hate me. And that's just not true. Don't believe it. Don't follow it. No. Stand with your convictions. Love Christ. Love God above all. Love your neighbors yourself. You do not have to accept the sin people live in. You do not have to accept the sin that you're stuck in. Let it go. Say, God, forgive me. Repent. He goes, awesome. Let's keep going. Let's make a difference. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 6, verse 47, he says, I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teachings, and then follows it. Is that not exciting? This is Jesus, the Messiah. The perfect lamb says, I will show you what it's like if you come to me. 
follow my teachings or listen to them. Take them in and then follow it. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. I want to take that challenge. So when I'm struggling, Jesus, I come to you. I'm listening. And he shows me. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. No matter how crazy this world is, you have given me a way out. Your yes, and we have to remember this, that everything that Jesus is talking about or teaching us or learning or showing us, every single answer is yes and amen. Yes and amen.